Let's learn how to quickly and efficiently auto duck all of your music inside of Premiere Pro. Let's go. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're inside of Premiere Pro and we're going to take a look at auto ducking music so that you don't have to manually create all of the keyframes. The good thing about this method is you can then manually adjust those keyframes afterwards and indeed go back in again and overwrite them by auto ducking again. Um, so it still leaves that level of flexibility. So let's take a look then. You can see I'm inside of Premiere Pro and I've got this little bit of footage. This is me doing some narration to prove the fact that you can auto detect and drop background music using auto ducking in Premiere Pro. So as you can probably tell at the moment that hasn't been auto ducked. Uh, to prove my point even further, I'm just going to increase the actual gain of this by a little bit, maybe we say by five pixels. I just did a pause and the music will go. So it's really loud. Now, the way we're going to use this is with the Essential Sounds window. So you're going to need to go to Windows and open up Essential Sound. That's going to bring up a separate window like so. The way this works is you can assign certain clips um, values, and then those values are modified based on um, the different things that you put in, the different settings you put in for that um, preset almost. This tag rather than a value. Tag is a better word. So the first thing to do is, um, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to unlink this footage, and we've just got our um, vocal narration in blue here and our music in green. First thing you need to do is tag your audio. This can be several clips or one. For simplicity, I'm just using one. So I've got my clip here. I'm going to tag that as dialogue. That's going to bring up a number of options, which should be fairly familiar to you. You can do things like um, change a different uh, EQ. So you might want, for example, podcast voice or background voice. Now, I've already done all that outside in audition, so I'm going to ignore that from now. You can enhance the speech and you can create things like reverbs as well as adjust the clip volume. All we're going to do, though, is make it a clear audio, a audio type of dialogue. So you can clear that and remove it, but we're gonna leave it as dialogue. Select your music now and go to, you probably guessed it, the tag music. When you've done so, you'll see that certain tags have this ducking option. You're gonna turn that on and then you have three main sections. First of all, we're gonna choose duck against dialogue. What that means is anything that, uh, any time a clip that we've tagged as dialogue appears in the timeline, this music is going to drop down in keyframes. Sensitivity is how long or short a gap is um, determined by Premiere Pro. For example, if you have a very high sensitivity, um, then the uh, gaps will be shorter between um, ducking the music. So for example, a very high sensitivity um, will definitely include all of these silences here. A very low sensitivity probably won't include some of the shorter ones. If we set it too high, it might include some of these teeny tiny gaps, which you don't want to there. I'm going to leave it at six for now. We're going to leave the duck amount uh, the same and we're going to choose the fades as well. Duck amount is just how much it drops down the actual volume. Fades is how long it takes to duck, how long it takes to fade down to that new level. I'm actually going to decrease that because I find it's very long, 800 milliseconds. I'm going to put it at about 300. Then, simple, click generate keyframes. You'll notice now that if we zoom in, it's auto ducked our rest of our music in the background there to leave the previous um, ones where there's no talking up at zero ducking in Premiere Pro. I just did a pause, the music could go back up, and now it should have gone back down again. And again. Voila. Now, again, if you came in and edited these, you can go and change whatever you want manually. If there's some bits it didn't catch, you can go and catch that yourself if you want to. But if you click generate keyframes again, it will erase everything you've done and regenerate based on whatever clips you've done. So if you chopped out a clip and you know made a little bit shorter here, for example, so you can chop out a section here, made this silence a bit shorter and ripple deleted. Both of these we can still see are um, labeled as dialogue. So if we select this clip again and choose generate keyframes, it's going to adjust those keyframes to fit that. So obviously you want to do this at the end, like any audio ducking at the end of your editing process, but it does allow you a little bit of flexibility if you did want to fix that. For example, say I want to duck that just a little bit less. Generate those keyframes again. It's now not quite so quiet. Ducking in Premiere Pro. 
there you go. I just did a pause so the music can go back up. And really that's all there is to it. You'd use that to start off your process. And then of course you can go through and manually edit to your heart's desire. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial. I thought it was a really neat trick and I thought I'd share it with you guys. If you'd like more stuff inside Premiere Pro, let me know. Uh, make sure to do all of the usual gubbins like like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff. I hate saying it, but I need to apparently. Uh, and I'll see you all next time on another episode of Tip Top. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.